Do you have an extra 10 gallon enclosure just sitting around? I do too many enclosures. Anyways, today we're gonna be talking about the top five reptiles for 10 gallon enclosures. A 10 gallon enclosure is perfect for introducing people to the hobby and for saving space. Anyways, let's get into the list. Let's go. Now coming in at number five, we got the Moorish Gecko or the Crocodile Gecko. Now, this is a gecko I am familiar with. I've been keeping them for about four years now. Uh, I'm not successful breeding them. I know exactly why. These animals are perfect for 10 gallon enclosures. I have two, two males. Like I said, I've had them for four years. Lovely, amazing animals. They like a more arid setup, more like a leopard gecko, uh, more like mountainside, arid, little warm. Not your jungle setup like we do with a lot of like tropical rainforest. Um, this isn't a care guide, do your research. Uh, these animals don't get too big, only about four to five inches max, but still have a lot of character. Both of my geckos, my crocodile geckos, I can feed off of tongs. I can work in their enclosures with either the top off or the front open. These animals do not mind my presence and um, they've actually grown on me uh, uh, over the years. Uh, I quite like them a lot. I, I like them a lot. So these animals in the wild can be found anywhere from Africa to Europe, all the way over to North America. They cover quite a big range. And uh, like I said, they don't like things too, too moist. But uh, nonetheless, this is a very hardy animal. You could expect them to live, I'm pretty sure, anywhere uh, close to 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years. I've had mine close to five, or, well, I've had them four years now. They, they do boast quite a long lifespan as long as you give them the care that they need, give them UVB, the proper humidity, heating and all of that. And even if you decide you wanna go big and do something big, you can do that too. I had them, I had a trio of them. I had them in, in a huge paludarium setup. Things didn't work out. Like I said, and I just I broke the whole group up and separated them into their own enclosures. So whether you go 10 gallons or you go 30 gallons, 40 gallons, they, this animal, will they, they'll use that space and they'll love you for it. Coming in at number four, we have the leaf chameleon. These animals are super small at max, only about three inches or something like that. In the wild, these animals are found in Madagascar. Once again, like I said, this is not a care guide. You may be able to find people working with this animal. They, they used to be super popular in the hobby. Now, not so much. And it's increasingly harder to get them because I think it's illegal to, to export. So they're not letting people export the animals. So really, if, if, if you find anybody working with them in captivity, that is your only shot and they are very rare in captivity. So this is something we should get working on now. Now coming in at number three, we have a nose. Now this is something that I'm gonna be working with in the future, but they're perfect for 10 gallon enclosures, whether you get a conversion kit or you just keep the enclosure how it is. These animals are absolutely amazing. You have your, your normal green anoles. Uh, they have these cool crested anoles. They have these mohawks. They have these chili red ones. Those are uh, the ones I want to work with. And there's another very rare one I want to work with called the blue anole. Um, I don't see anybody that has these. Uh, I'll do a little research and try to get my hands on them. But I absolutely got to have that animal. These animals are perfect though. Not only are they very, very small, and they stay small, and they're just about five inches uh, max. They have a lot of character. And with a little bit of work, these animals will get used to you, and you'll be able to work in their enclosure with, with, with the top off, and you'll be able to feed them, tell them feed them, and they'll come to you and just start to notice you. And these animals are just really cool with, like I said, a lot of character packed in this little body. Um, I like to call them the dart frogs of the lizard world. They're just very active, always active. They don't really hide much. They're, they're always out and just being active and, and running and jumping. These animals are absolutely amazing just to watch all day. You give them a nice planted enclosure, do it right. And they'll love you for it. 
these animals, like I said, are perfect for the 10 gallon enclosures. Um, I think that's how I'll start, start my, my colonies off until we, we get our practice up. But um, I, I think keeping things small is, is it, it makes it easy for clean up and just keeping an eye on your animals. So yeah, but these animals are perfect for 10 gallons. And like I said, I would just go ahead and make it all bioactive and, and plant it, make it nice and beautiful, something that is nice to look at because you're going to be looking at it a lot. These animals aren't going to be hiding. They're going to be out running, jumping, hunting, doing all that stuff. The, the males are quite brash. They don't, they don't mind. So yeah, 10 gallons, plant it out and admire your work. Coming in at number two. We got day geckos, and for the sake of 10 gallon tanks, we're gonna talk peacock day geckos. And these animals only get a couple inches. Much like the leaf chameleons, these animals are very small, but also have a lot of character. Become used to handling and tong feeding and things like that. These animals are absolutely amazing. You can keep little groups of them together. Once again, this is not a care guide to your research, but it's another one of those animals that will reward you with the the amount of work that you put in, they're, they're, they're not very shy. Hey, I mean, in the beginning they are, but with some work, like I said, they'll, they'll come around and start to love you, start to love your presence, and these animals are just amazing, not only to look at, but to interact with. Uh, once again, you might wanna go ahead and go bioactive, give it a bunch of plants, and peacock day geckos come jam-packed with colors. So when you're building the enclosure, make sure you do the same. Throw some plants in there that got some pop to them. You're gonna love looking at this enclosure. You're gonna love looking at this animal inside this enclosure. Why not? And sneaking in here at number one, white eye crocodile skinks. Now, this is another animal I am very familiar with. I've been breeding red eye crocodile skinks for years and would never have thought to put a pair of crocodile skinks in a 10 gallon enclosure. But I wanted to separate these two and watch them. Keep them separated from the rest of the, the skinks in the house and rather than putting them into a bin setup, I had extra enclosures sitting around so I went ahead and made one for them. And I'm glad I did. Cause these two are my most social crocodile skinks. They don't mind my presence. They come out to the front of the enclosure. I'm working, they eat in front of me but they won't take food from me yet. So I'm working on tom feeding with them and I think I'll be able to do it with these two. And I think that's absolutely amazing. I'm, and I, I really think it's the small space that helped. They were always secure in their enclosure. They are, they know every inch of it. They know where they can run back to. And because of that, they're not afraid to come out. And uh, I've been keeping an eye on them. They're doing very well. Uh, we'll update you guys on them soon. But uh, yeah, if, whether you have just a single one um, baby, uh, sub-adult, adult, or a pair, 10 gallons is, I think, the perfect space. Now, you can go bigger. I have mine in many, many different types of enclosures. You can go almost as big as you want, right? But I think 10 gallons, it works really well, especially making these animals feel secure. They're usually very shy, very docile animals. I, I can't get my animals to come out to the front but these two do 10 gallons perfect for the crocodile skink i would say red eye or white eye whatever you decide to put in there whether it be a single or a pair and make sure you put enough hides in there give them a nice water so that this isn't a care guide do your research but make sure you give them something to live for these animals will once again reward you for it trust me and just a few honorable mentions, you know, leopard geckos work well in 10 gallon enclosures, solo by themselves, of course. We got like knobtail geckos, they, that's perfect, perfect for that animal. Viper geckos, perfect for that animal. So there are a couple other animals out there too that are perfect for the 10 gallon enclosure. Do a little bit of research, pick which one's right for you. Anyways, that's the list, you guys. I'm your boy, Smith. This is All Things Living. I'm out.